We're going to talk about inspecting ship service generators and prime movers, utilizing the training guide and your PTC checklist to cover all the tasks. First and foremost, we want to talk about hazards and PPE. Make sure you're wearing your prescribed PPE to include eyes, ears, hard hat, safety toe, boots, coveralls, anything else you might need. Some hazards to be aware of, operating usually in an engine room, could be a heat stress issue depending on how hot it is in the engine room, depending on where you're located, time of year, etc. Also be aware that it is a noise environment, so you may require your hearing protection, depending on whether or not machinery is running when you're there. Also want to make sure your deck plates are around or any tripping hazards, make sure you know where you're going to be walking, uh, any overhead hazards, things you might bump your head on. Right now we're going to go over ship service generator on board this vessel. You can see right here, this is actually the generator. This is what produces the electricity on board. This is considered the prime mover. On this vessel, it's a diesel engine. Prime movers can be different. You can have a steam turbine powering your generator, or you can have a shaft generator, which is the actual propulsion shaft rotates the equipment inside the generator to create your electricity. So first thing we're going to do is take a general condition of the generator itself and the prime mover before we start and do any testing. First off we have here is the generator control panel. This is uh, an electric control module for the generator. Provides all its basically brain functions. So we'll get all of our readings here, our RPM, lube boil pressure, uh, jack of water temperature. Uh, we'll figure out the voltage, any of the, uh, the frequency it's putting out is all displayed here locally. So we're gonna basically walk our way through. We have our intake for the diesel engine itself. We have our cooler for jacket water, which is what cools the engine down. Down here, we have a fuel pump. When you're looking at your fuel pump, we're looking for any evidence of fuel leaks. Fuel leaks can be, can be identified by a puddle underneath, looks wet. Uh, if you see any fuel leaks, it's usually a no-go. We want to stop and make sure that we address it. An important thing to note is on some, gen some engines, you will find uh, discoloration on the paint from the fuel from pre uh, previous leaks. That's okay if it's still there, but dry. Uh, just indicated that they may have had a leak at some point and did some maintenance on it. But we want to make sure that we're not leaking any fuel. So basically off of the fuel pump itself, we're going to trace any fuel hoses or fuel lines, make sure nothing's chafing, make sure everything is good and there's no leaks. So from here, we have our primary fuel filters. We have our fuel water separators, which is the first stage in fuel separation from the tanks, then to our primary, which is uh, right here. From here, it goes down to your fuel pump. All of the fuel lines from the fuel pump are internal, which means they're hidden under this valve cover. So there's no external fuel lines. So we just need to make sure there's no fuel or anything leaking, any oil, major oil leaks around the valve cover itself. Then we'll work our way around. Here we have a drive belt. We want to make sure that there are covers over here. So this rotating machinery, which would be the, drive, the, the belt, doesn't grab you or anybody that may be down here working while the engine is turning. From here, we have our coolant manifold. This is where all of our jacket water and our raw water, which would be seawater in this instance, come in. We have our starter here. Starters can be electric, hydraulic, pneumatic, or mechanical, depending on the installation. This one happens to be a pneumatic starter, which means it uses air to actually turn the engine to get it to start. Walk around and verify all of our, there's no electrical issues with the cabling. Once we're good from there, we're good to tell the engineer we can start it up and begin testing. Another important piece of equipment to look at on your prime mover on this diesel generator is your turbo. Your turbo uses exhaust gas as it comes out of the engine. It turns a turbine fan in here, which in turn draws in your fresh air, increased pressure into your intake cooler so you can take your fresh air into the engine. This thing moves at a high speed requires lube oil to be applied to the bearing in here. 
This is your lube hole supply. You want to verify it's not leaking, you can stick your finger in here. If it's not rotating and not warm. Under here is your actual lube oil drain. This is where your lube oil drains out and goes back into the engine. This is a common spot to find leaks. Any lube oil leaks on or around your turbo are extremely bad. This thing heats up well over 1,000 degrees and any lube oil or any fuel oil in and around this area will immediately flash off and cause a fire. Your exhaust lagging. This lagging is here to, perf to, perform, to perform two functions. One, to protect personnel from the exhaust, hot exhaust piping, and two, to prevent anything from splashing onto the hot exhaust piping, your lube oil or any fuel oil that may be spraying or hydraulic fluid, anything in the engine room. That way it doesn't come in contact and immediately ignite and cause a fire. If you want to verify that there are no gaps, everything is sealed up, looks good, you're ready to go. One of the last things we're going to look for is the actual data plate, sometimes called a data tag. This is placed here on this generator here. The information we're going to find on here is when the generator itself was assembled, the rated speed, i.e. the RPMs that it's going to be at. We're going to look for the frequency, the voltage, uh, manufacturer info as far as who made it and where. Um, sometimes they'll be in a, inside the actual equipment itself, but there will be a window that you'll be able to see inside. Now that we've completed our walk around and made sure everything looks functional, we'll begin the functional testing of the safeties of the prime mover. That includes low lube oil pressure, low, uh, high jacket water temperature, we'll do a overspeed, an engine overspeed, and then we'll get ready to do our reverse power relays if the generator is capable of being paralleled with another generator on board. Some engines, most modern engines now, have electronic control modules, like I said before, ECMs, like this one, that may require the actual engine generator uh, technician to come out and plug in a laptop where they can actually access the ECM to make changes and do testing. Most of the modern engines uh, have approved testing procedures within the manufacturer, and we defer to those versus actually trying to do uh, physical things to the engine. Some of your older engines may have uh, things where you can turn off the oil pressure to the sensor to trick the sensor into thinking that the engine lost oil pressure when you never really actually lose oil pressure, but it will initiate a shutdown. Jacket water temperatures are a little different depending on the type of sensor that the, is installed in the engine, whether it's a dry well, which means it sits in a tube within the engine. So if we were to remove the sensor, none of the jacket water would come out and the sensor itself is dry. Or you have a wet well where it's physically installed in and is in direct contact with the jacket water itself. It's extremely difficult to pull out a jacket water sensor from a live, or from a wet well without losing all of your jacket water. This is stuff to discuss with beforehand prior to arriving. Uh, with the vessel to find out what type of testing they can do on board and do they need technicians to come? Do they have spare sensors that we can test that they'll install? Uh, things of this nature. Depending on the vessel or platform you're on, there may be a requirement for final emergency power. This typically is an emergency generator. When we talk about the vessel losing all power, the ship, ship service generators going down, the emergency generator has to have its own method of starting and recover the ship from a blackout condition. Refer to the video on emergency generators for more information on that. To summarize what we've been talking about for ship service generators and their prime movers, we we'll utilize the PGC checklist to make sure we covered it all. We talked about hazards and PPE, things to wear and be careful of when you're walking around doing your inspection or examination. Examine the different components on the engine the prime mover itself, we talked about installation machinery guards and covers, heat shielding, we talked about accessible, excessive leaks of flammable fluids, your high pressure fuel pumps, your fuel filters, making sure there's zero leaks prior to testing, lube oil leaks at your turbo, zero leaks at the turbo. We talked about safety testing of the prime mover itself, the little lube oil shutdown, high jack of water pressure, engine overspeed. We talked about how the vessel may or may not be required to 
restore power from a blackout condition, verify the generator data plate, and overall the general condition. As with any system you're, test, you're, you're testing or uh, inspecting, you're also always looking for any unauthorized alterations or modifications to the system. If you have any questions, anything that I've gone over that you might want a little bit more information, make sure you write them down and ask your local VO at the completion of this video.